he has written for The Colbert Report, Late Night with Seth Meyers. You guys may have seen him in those Sonic commercials. He has also been on Inside Amy Schumer and Key and Peele. And he has a recurring role on Veep, which is a show I cannot say enough about. Please give it up for Peter Cross! Okay, so I'm going to tell a story um, that I kind of think about this happening in my life every end of summer and beginning of fall because uh, this happened to me my junior year of college. I went on a trip called Semester at Sea. I don't know if people know about it or not. It's... Um, it's run through the University of Pittsburgh, the Berg, as it would be. And uh, it is, um, it's a trip on a boat. It's like on a big sort of cruise liner-y type boat. It's not very um, fancy like a, like a luxury cruise liner, but it's that type of boat. It's about 500 kids. And then there's the faculty and uh, the crew. Um, and it's basically college on a ship for, you know, three months. And I went on in the fall, and it's, it's a full semester. So we started in... Uh, Vancouver and we went east uh, across the Pacific and we went to Japan and a bunch of Pacific countries and ultimately sort of around um, uh, southern tip of India, went to Sri Lanka through the Suez Canal, blah, 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 you know, Egypt, Israel, things, and then back to Florida. It was amazing. It was a really transformative experience of my life. And uh, most importantly, I uh, fell in love pretty hard with a girl on the trip. And uh, um, it was amazing. And I have with me this journal that is, uh, this is the actual journal that I uh, wrote in like I was Kevin Spacey in Seven um, uh, all on this trip very often. And you'd think that when you're like traveling around the world and having all these amazing experiences and seeing you know, Asia for the first, like going to Japan as a, as a you know, 21 year old kid is mind blowing. It's like, it's, it's incredible. This is mostly about her. Um, <laughs> and there's another one. Uh, but anyway, so I just want to read a couple of things just to like give you the sense of where uh, my mind was at. So let's see, here's the first. Um, this is, this is, no one has ever heard this. I was telling my wife I was going to do this and she was like, Oh, really? Like, I don't, she didn't know any of this stuff. Um, okay. Can I gather up and store away? I would snatch up every droplet, morsel, and slice of beauty that ever existed in the universe, and I'd run up your stairs, fall to your peasant knees, she wasn't a peasant, and lay my accumulations at your feet, weep and collapse. It's all here, I'd say. I spent all my days, every hour of my life devoted to endeavoring to capture for you, that's a horrible sentence, to try to give you the beauty that you give me. In all my dreams, in all my lifetimes, for all my energy expended to every fiber, I would collapse and die. That's, that's, what, that's what it says in there that I felt that at the time. And I, I think at this point in the, in the trip, I had known her for like about a week. Um, <laughs> you know. So uh, I, was pl I was playing it cool. Definitely <laughs> keeping, the old, keeping the old cards close to the chest, as it were. Oh, Lord. Okay, here's another entry. This is like maybe five days later or so. The winds could blow me away to you, seeking, grabbing my heart in this rainy sky. I think I was sitting outside in the rain and the wind, <laughs> writing this. Uh, to kiss, to hold, to make the sweetest of all love. <laughs> the way young, underlined, primal, torturously lovers are supposed to do. It's not a word. Explore and rage with all the passion. Here's where it's get good. Rage with all the passion of the elders who have lived before and all the kin who will succeed. <laughs> so, you know, everybody. Uh, you know, I, didn't, I wasn't like reading a lot of Tolkien or anything at the time. I just, I just had like sort of a real connection to the elders. I wrote. I wrote letters like this is this is a long time ago. This was like 20 years ago. So I, you would get to the next port that you were at, and you would write letters, and you'd mail letters from your port. And so this is you know mid 90s, 
You'd like get to Japan and then you'd mail a letter that you had written you know, a week ago while you were traveling across the ocean. You'd send letters back to your family and they would get it like two or three weeks later. So my, my parents were getting letters that were like, I met the girl I'm gonna marry, she's amazing. And she was Jewish but had uh, blonde hair. And I was like, she's a blonde haired Jew. Like I had f gone to sea and found a mermaid or something like, oh my God, they have those here on the water. They have blonde hair. It was, uh, yeah, it was pretty great. Um, okay, so this is like the, the, the like extended metaphor that I decided to commit to in this is amazing. I'll just say that. Okay. Right now, she's not here. And, and we all know how I feel. We all, the, the people reading my journal. Each sense deprived of its potential romantic stimuli. This is so I forgot I wrote this until a week ago. And it, it, like, it's like somebody is like slicing me open from the inside with like a butter knife. It's so painful. Okay. So this is about all the senses. Upon the first encounter, the eyes stood up and have the floor. I've seen her, they proclaim. And compared to the others we've come across, I have to say, it's looking good from here. <laughs> so the eyes are a fan. A cheer arises as the nose chimes in. <laughs> I'm very excited at the prospects here, <laughs> says the nose. Really, say, say the ears who have not been paying much attention. Why, yes, of course, says the nose. I caught a hint, a brief hint on the wafting wind, and I can tell you, this one has much to offer. <laughs> God. Then suddenly, the ears explode with a newfound interest. Why, that is something special, quite a voice, very sensitive, and the laugh, well. <laughs> you know. This is the best, ready? The call from the brain booms over the loudspeaker. We're trying very hard to accommodate those of you in touch and taste. It has been difficult up until now and it may continue to be so for quite some time. I've actually been doing all right, pipes in touch. I can only speak for myself, but I've been getting <laughs> reports in all over that even the most incidental contact has been astonishing. <laughs> so I guess like if I rubbed up against her somehow, that was great, I don't know. This is the worst part. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about me, said Taste. I'm used to it by now. <laughs> Yuck! Yuck! What the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> and also, it's like a like taste is some pervert that's like, oh wait, that's cool. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> the most disgusting thing. Okay. So after all of this, after all of this, like writing in the journal and getting, you know, getting it only out onto these pages, I realized I needed to say something to her. And it's not a lot of students. <laughs> about this. I, we talked, we were you know, friendly, there were like 500 students on the ship, so you, know, you sort of settle in in the first few weeks, you kind of you know, see who you're gonna hang out with. And obviously I knew her well enough to talk to her, and, and, you know, and, and the nose was close enough to smell. Um, but I wanted to actually tell her like, how I really, really felt. So, uh, but I didn't want to do it like one-on-one. -on -one. I, I thought uh, I should do it in like a, a, um, at the coffee house open mic, talent show thing where every single person on the ship was going to be there. And so, um, you know, you could like play music or read bad poetry. And I thought, I'll do both and just sing you a song that I wrote for you. Now you get to hear it. All right. Well, thank you. I'm not sure if that's a OK. So, um, Anyway, so I, as I, I mentioned uh, casually to Selena back uh, at the bar that uh, I, this is the second time that I have ever played this for a group of people. Um, <laughs> in the first uh, time she was in the audience, and uh, she's not now, which is uh, much less nerve-wracking. Um, but I will just... Like, right. 
And uh, I am also like editing parts of this song out because it's so fucking long. I like played the whole thing and I was like, that was eight minutes. There's like a whole breakdown where I took a quote from a, 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 like the opening flap of Great Gatsby. There's like a poem in there and I like added that like at the last minute. I was like, oh, I have to sing that. And that part has a lot of like, like a lot of like major seventh chords, which are just lame. You know how bad those are. When you string them all together, they're not that great. Um, okay. So, okay, ready? Here we go. All right. So I will say this also. She had a boyfriend back at the college that she was going to, and she talked about him and how they kind of didn't really, you know, get along all that well, and I was like, that's my opening. I'm in. Like, she's got, okay. So then I, I uh, um, if you thought the, uh, the senses, uh, the, the horrible play that was like the five-character play of the senses was bad, this is like a whole extended metaphor that you'll see as well. Okay, ready? <laughs> Well, it was once upon my time In a land so lush and green On a mountaintop so high There lived a king and queen That's her and her boyfriend And now the people love their king And they assumed he loved his bride But it was only their wedding ring That was keeping her by his side Now you can tell, I have like a B minus voice, okay? So that's like, I'm not, I have no illusions But like, that also I think probably contributed a lot to you know, what you'll hear. <laughs> you see, I knew this all to be true because I watched McQueen each day. Simple, lonely gardener, she was my muse. Far too beautiful to ever look away. And waltzed, I wrote waltzed instead of wild. And waltzed my hog teeth, weep and swoon. The strangest thing did cross my eyes. On the first night of each new moon, she would sit in her room and cry. And I would sing. <laughs> I'll never forget your tears. And I'll never forget you, queen. I'll never forget the things that I saw in you that your king had never seen. And my tongue gets twisted up tied. And my, I just want to let you, I, I just can't let you go, sorry. And I just once wish I tried just once to tell you so. And then you'd know. So she's sitting in the audience watching this. No fucking clue this is coming. <laughs> While the king, he tries to comfort you with his condescending hand on your shoulder, callous and cruel. You know, sorry. He don't understand. And when you turn out to the night, I see you're searching for something new. And the yearning tears rule your eyes, rule, because of the metaphor of like the rulers. I want to climb up and rescue you. Here's where it gets fucking great. Towering, flaxen, and feminine over all, majestically unfurled. In that room, I'd heed your desperate call, proclaim you queen of all my world. And at that moment, we'd make love. And I fucking did it like that. Love, the way that tortured young lovers do. This is the best. Passion oozing, flying above. You know how passion oozes. Gross! Gross! It says passion oozes. Gross! Passion oozing, flying above. Oh, God. All that brings your tears to you. Okay, ready? Now we get to the end. The end as far as you're concerned, but there was a lot more. Okay, ready? And now my tale ends so sad. Just the way that it began, the queen I knew I could never have. So away from her I ran, and my days now are noxious woe. <laughs> and at night she breathes my dreams, where I always tell her so, and dry the tears of my fair queen. And I do sing. I'll never forget your tears. I'll never forget your queen. I'll never forget the things I saw in you that your king had never seen. And my tongue gets twist up tied, and I just can't let you go. And I'm glad now that I tried just this once to tell you so. And then I look straight at her, and I'm gonna pick you, and I said, and now you know. <laughs> 
So, there's a little bit more. So, you know, balls in her court after that. Um, and it was, uh, <laughs> I went up to her and I saw her after the whole evening sort of dissipated and, and I, uh, I, I, you know, talked to her and, and she just was like floored and she's like, that was about, that was about me, right? You wrote that for me? And I said, yeah. And we kind of like walked out the, the, to the deck, you know, of the ship and, and it's, there was like, to me, it was like unbelievably romantic. Like we're in the Indian Ocean and the wind is like blowing and, and there's little flecks of, you know, the, the sea is like jumping up and kissing our faces and, and <laughs> I leaned in and I gave her a kiss. And, you know, we, we kissed, kissed as like a, an activity. It wasn't like a peck. Um, and to this date, I have never experienced a more one-sided kiss <laughs> in my entire life. It was like when you practice kissing on your hand, but somehow less, uh, less passionate. Um, and um, she, I kissed her and she endured it. I was like this. And she was like this. So eventually, it did not happen. We kind of spent a few days trying to, you know, make it happen. And then we landed, uh, we, we docked at a port. She went off with some friends. I went off with some friends. And we came back. She was seeing this other guy. She had, like, in, in at, like, days after this whole, like, outpouring to her, she found this other guy on their little jaunts in Sri Lanka. And it was very obvious they actually like liked each other, had like a two-way relationship, and it wasn't one person like <laughs> vomiting poetry onto the other person. Um, and I found another girl that I uh, uh, was with, and she was this kind of cool artsy chick, and she made me a bunch of mixtapes with like Kate Bush and Bjork, and uh, and like women reading poems about lesbianism and stuff. <laughs> and and she, you know, she like put she liked to put my penis on her eye. Um, <laughs> which is totally true. She didn't do it like with her eye open, like, but she would like rest my penis like on her eye, sort of in the middle of things. And to this date, it is the least sexy thing that has ever happened to me. Um, eventually she and I broke up after we all went back to school and everything. And uh, you know, cause like at that time, you know, if it was today, I would just text her a picture of my penis and she would like put the phone up to her eye. <laughs> you know. With landlines, you can't really do that. Um, so I, you know, I went and saw their girls, and she, you know, she dated other guys or whatever. And but this girl, Allie, the guy that she dated on that trip, she came, she kept seeing him, and you know, through college, and she saw him after college, and uh, she sees him uh, every single day of her life because they are married. And uh, for all of that effort that I put out and all of the poetry and emotion and like intensity that I put into that hoping that she would fall for me, I realized that it actually worked because I drove her into the arms of the man she would spend the rest of her life with. <laughs> it just wasn't me. <laughs> so that's my story. Thank you. Comes the one 